Hello guys and welcome back to yet another video for FutureTechIdeas.com. I'm also making this video for uh, BrayhawkTech.com, our uh, partnered site with uh, FutureTechIdeas.com. Um, and today we're going to be taking a look at, you guessed it, the new Malwarebytes uh, 2.0 update, the Malwarebytes Anti-Malware Premium. Um, you can also download the free version as well. But uh, I recommend to all of my uh, customers and, and followers out there, as well as my family members, to purchase Malwarebytes. You get a lifetime uh, license with Malwarebytes Premium for uh, like for your uh, 20, 24, 25 bucks um, lifetime license. So I definitely recommend it. Um, if you already have Malwarebytes Anti Malware, you can just go to malwarebytes.org and just click here. I want my free upgrade. Um, now, over 300 million downloads worldwide, over 5 billion pieces of malware removed, which is amazing, guys. Frankly, I think Malwarebytes is one of the best anti-malware programs out there. And you can also get it for free, or you can purchase it for uh, $25 for a lifetime license, which, like I said, I definitely recommend doing. So basically, you just uh, go ahead and purchase that. And it'll bring you to the uh, fill out page where you got to put in all your information. As you can see, we got $24.95. Uh, we got the one year subscription, one license per three PCs. Um, I, I also want to make this uh, distinction here the one year subscription. I actually get a lifetime license. Um, I guess they changed it up to one year. Actually, I did not know that. Uh, but I get a lifetime license because I was originally a uh, Malwarebytes Anti Malware uh, Pro subscriber before they made this uh, new 2.0 update so um, I automatically get the full-time license so hopefully you guys have already got this and uh, are able to have the lifetime license um, but uh, hopefully they'll change it back to lifetime license uh, subscription but yes $24.95 download it they also got uh, tons of other programs as well other softwares available that are amazing guys so what I'm gonna do is I am actually going to uh, run malware bytes anti-malware um so uh here it is i have it downloaded on my desktop and i am going to up oh, it wants to uh uh allow my computer to have access click yes and uh there it is now basically there is a problem with this um and i am in the midst of of uh you know talking to uh malware bytes uh the, the creators of malware bytes with the problem that they have here um and that problem is the real-time protection is not enabled. However, I have enabled this and, and uh, disabled it, and it's it's not working. As you can see, I'm doing it now, I'm enabling malware protection, and it still does not get enabled. I go to the settings, I drop down to the detection and protection center, and I enable it here, and guess what happens? No protection. I even run a scan while I've checked that. And it still says no protection. So the guys at Malwarebytes Anti Malware Premium, um, go ahead and uh, and look at your inbox on Facebook because I have messaged you guys about this. I'm not sure if something that I did wrong, um, but uh, I, I've been a uh, a pro member or a premium member um, for about a year and a half now, and I do not understand why uh, this pr no protection is still up here. Um, I've ran all the scans. The hyper scans are awesome, the, the threat scan, and I even did a custom scan as well. So let's go ahead and go into the features first. Um, like I said, once you download this, you'll get prompted with this awesome little interface here that they have. As you can see at the top, it's uh, 2.00.1000 uh, for the version. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just take a look at the scan options that they have here. We got threat scans, our most capable comprehensive scan type. It looks in all the places malware is known to hide. So we're going to go ahead and scan now and see what that pops up. We're not going to run the full scan because this is going to take a while. But I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the things. This is a pre-scan operation that they have now. This is new. And uh, basically it's uh, you know doing a pre-scan. Um, we got system drivers. It's going to scan the system drivers. It's going to scan the master boot record. The physical sectors, as you see it drop down. Um, it's going to do the memory objects, the startup objects, the registry objects, the file system objects, as well as the heuristic ana uh, analysis, which is uh, very in-depth for a, a anti-malware uh, uh, program here, software. Um, so let's go ahead and cancel that. Yes, I'm going to make sure I want to cancel because um, I'm doing a video here. And we're going to go back to scan. Scan has canceled. That's fine. We'll go to main, main menu here so we can go back to custom scan. 
Now we're going to go ahead and click on scan now. Now custom scan allows you to customize where and what you want to scan. So basically you can uh, have all your, your drives here. You can even drop down your drives and scan separate folders within your, uh, with your C drive. Um, so if you want to scan the recycle bin, you can do that. If you want to scan the boot, uh, you can the boot folder. You can do that. Uh, you can just scan all separate folders, program files as well, uh, even scribe drive, uh, users and Windows. Now, if you have separate uh, drives, they also allow you to uh, do the drop-down menu in them as well. And then you can even go further into in depth and go into more in depth and just keep scanning each of them separately. That's what I like to do sometimes. Um, over on the left-hand side, we got custom scanning op options. Uh, you can just check them off, uh, whatever you prefer. Scan archives, scan for rootkits, we want that. Scan startup and registry settings, we want that. Scan memory objects, we want that. Now, potentially unwanted programs or PUP, um, they have a drop-down menu to, to basically tell Malwarebytes, uh, the, the, the software, what to do with uh, potentially unwanted programs. And you can uh, treat this uh, detection as malware. You can warn user about detection, or you can ignore detection. I always go warn user. Um, because there is some programs on here that get detected as uh, pups or I mean as uh, uh, unwanted programs so I just go with warn user about detection as well as with uh, PUM um, which is uh, potentially unwanted modifications so I go and warn user and uh, we're good to go with that so let's go back let's see if you can go back here go to cancel now let's go to hyperscan hyperscan basically quickly checks your system for active threats if anything is found, we recommend running a threat scan afterward. So basically, you run the hyperscan. It's pretty fast. Um, probably for like, uh, like say, if you're on a website and all of a sudden something happens and something starts downloading, you want to hurry up and run this real quick because this is going to take. This is going to go pretty fast, and it'll it'll throw, it'll show you if there's any uh, uh, need for more action. Um, and if so, then you're going to go and run a threat scan, which is going to take a little bit longer, and it's going to remove the malware. Uh, that is on your computer. So we're going to go ahead and see what Hyperscan uh, does. And let's see what they got. Okay, they do this pre-scan as well. They got the system drivers, the master boot record, the physical sectors, the memory objects, startup objects, and the heuristic analysis. And it goes by pretty quick, guys. So you'll definitely be uh, getting that malware out of your system in no time at all. All right, so we're going to pause. Oh, cancel. I thought it canceled. Let's see. if. Yep, there we go. All right, go back to main menu. Now we're going to go over to the settings, and this is very important. This is where you're going to want to go to first off. Um, general settings. Now, I just recently learned this. In order to right-click on a separate document, you have to enable Explorer Content Menu Entry, um, I believe which is already by default enabled if you have the newer uh, update, the newer update for the uh, malware bytes here. But I did not, so this was already on no. And uh, I tried doing that, and I was like, wait a minute, they, they deleted this from this? This was a cool feature. So basically, I had to go in and, and uh, click yes for the Explorer content menu entry. You can select your language. You can enable uh, notifications, which is recommended. Uh, close notifications after seven seconds, that's fine. You can also restore default settings there. Um, now let's go down to malware exclusions. This is where you basically exclude a, uh, a subfolder um, or any type of folder for that matter. You can exclude it from being scanned. So basically, like if you're like me and you like to do uh, create viruses for pen testing and and uh, just to just to mess around in virtual machines, um, you can go ahead and exclude files that are on your desktop. Say, for instance, I got a file on here that has a bunch of viruses inside it. I can go ahead and exclude that because I know that, that those are viruses that I created in order for testing. Then we got web exclusions. So if there's an IP or a domain that uh, you want uh, ha to have access to your uh, computer. But uh, uh, you want to make sure that uh, it's a website that's, you know, legit. Um, you don't want to go having uh, malware downloaded via the website that you basically allow to have uh, access to. So I recommend this if you find, uh, you know, a list of IPs or a list of websites that are known for malware. I would definitely add this, add them to this uh, option here. Um, so we go down to the next uh, next uh, option here, which is detection and protection, which we basically went through. Customize detection and protection behavior to malware bytes, anti-malware. These settings and recommend uh, are recommended for advanced users. So as you can see, I have malware protection enabled and malware uh, or malicious website protection enabled as well. However, when I go to the dashboard, it does not show that here. I close the program. It still does it. I, I change it around. It still does it. I have no idea why they're doing this, why this is happening. Um, so detection options, you can uh, just check off if you want to scan for rootkits, scan within archives, 
or use Advanced Heuristic Engine, um, which I, I, I use that all the time. Uh, here's the non-malware protection, which is the PUP and PUM. Um, you basically can add the war detection there as well. Um, then we go down to updates. And what I like about this is you can basically uh, update options. You can uh, update, uh, notify user if database is out of date for more than one day. We can go all the way up to uh, 28 days. Um, so yeah, and we can do proxy settings as well. Uh, recommended settings, you can go there and see what the recommended settings are. We also got the history settings. Uh, so you can scan log options. You can uh, basically import them to a specific uh, uh, directory in your uh, uh, C drive, your program data. Um, or you can say don't export. I mean, uh, I don't really need that. Uh, but I basically like to look at the, the, the data that gets uh, scanned, the logs. Um, we got statistical data. You can help fight malware by anonymously providing his, uh, historical information, which I definitely recommend doing. You help them out and you help yourself out in the uh, process. Access policies. Control levels of access to various settings and functions for users of Malwarebytes anti-malware. So basically, if you have another user on here, and uh, or you have somebody else on here, you can basically add a, a policy, access policy. Um, so maybe, say, you don't want them to look at your history. You basically can add a policy where another user that's logged in will not be able to look at the history. As you can see here, we can uh, click history, access options, and then we can go and policy name, we can uh, create a password, confirm password and description, and click OK. And you'll have to have a password in order to view the history. Advanced settings. We got the recommended settings once again here. Um, we got start malware at the malware windows. I always recommend that. But be aware that it does slow down a little bit, uh, the startup. You can enable malware protection when anti malware, uh, malware bytes, anti malware starts, which I recommend, as well as enable malicious website protection, which I recommend. Uh, you can delay protection at startup for 15 seconds or, uh, let's see, 180 seconds. Um, I don't recommend that. I mean, if you if you want to, you can, because like I said, it does slow down the startup. Um, you can automatically quarantine detected item, which I do. Um, and enable self protection module, um, which I don't recommend. But uh, if you're more experienced in, in that, you can. Um, I also have another, a backup virus program um, as well, which I'm a uh, paying customer of. Uh, but uh, I definitely recommend you guys leave that alone for now. Um, automated scheduling, you can basically schedule updates and threat scans uh, by clicking here or by just going to add. You can click here and, you know, edit. Or no, actually, you can remove it. You can't uh, edit it. Oh, that kind of stinks. That would have been nice to edit it. But uh, yeah, you can add more uh, more uh, scheduling. So that's pretty neat. Then we go down to About, and basically you can ask for help. Uh, and hey, look at here. Imagine a world without malware. Malwarebytes does. So malwarebytes.org, guys, to check out all the information for the latest anti-malware. They also have a great blog where they post a lot of different uh, malware exploits and, and uh, program exploits, software exploits, if you will. So I definitely recommend going to their blog as well. You can just go to malwarebytes.org, scroll all the way down at the bottom. Matter of fact, I'll do that for you guys now and just uh, just show you where you can go. And I do apologize for my voice. I am suffering from the flu. So you scroll all the way down and you see blog here. You just click on blog. You can also go to the forums. you got careers and all that good stuff. So that is the place to find out about all the anti-malware that's out there in today's uh, today's world. Um, so what else have we got? We got the histories where you can look at the uh, histories of your scans. As you can see, one of the scans did detect my uh, f files where I do have uh, uh, potentially uh, unwanted programs on here. Um, application logs, you can check that out as well. Protection logs, um, you can delete them. Uh, you can view them just by uh, clicking on it and then clicking view. Uh, and then you can go to your my account, which I'm not going to go to because it does have my uh, ID key on there. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but I definitely recommend Malwarebytes check into this whole real-time protection uh, fiasco thing that's going on here because I have no idea why it's not allowing me to uh, enable real-time protection. Like I said, it may just be a, a, a random thing, um, a rare thing at that. Uh, but uh, maybe I should just try and re-download it or re-update to the uh, 2.0 here but uh, once again this has been a another video for futuretechideas.com this is also going to be a video for brayhawktech.com our partnered site for future tech ideas as well as I am a member of Brayhawk Tech um, so I appreciate you guys hitting the like button hitting the share button out there uh, commenting below let me know what you guys think of malware bytes anti-malware 
And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Once again, I am Jason Gorett, the owner of Future Tech Ideas and team member of BrayhawkTech.com. We'll see you guys next time.